So he's not just doing this off the top of his head. And it has nothing to do with whether he's dating a girlfriend who's part of Black Lives Matter or not. That is castrating this man as well, as if to say he has no voice. This young man who has the, the fortune of being live, able to live in both worlds, because he's biracial, can come out and say, look, it is what it is. It is what I have seen. It is what I have noticed in my world, in my generation. And so I'm here to say there is some oppression that's going on. And what is going on with the police department, <clears throat> this has to stop. And now they've placed him in a position where his own life is at risk on many levels. And we should not sit back and allow this to continue. And then they equate him not standing up for the flag as being disrespectful to the military. And it's like two totally separate things. We're talking about things that are going on in the United States. The United States is not united. So we need to gain an understanding. Like he spoke to another, to a, um, a military Veteran. person. He was from the Green, Green Berets. And he spoke to him about why he wasn't um, standing up for the national anthem. And then the guy was like, you know what, I understand. Like, you have a right um, to feel how you want to feel. He said, I do wish he would have stood up. He goes, but it's his right not to. Right. And that's just what it is. It's his right. Because when you stop standing, you know, you're going to fall for anything. You have to stand for something. And people have to see it. Now, just when he, um, other people are joining in with him now, other players. Like, okay, I'm going to stand with you now. That's good. So it only takes one, and then others will start to come forth. And look at the hypocrisy of this. How dare this country even appoint what he's doing with the <coughs> veterans? This country is so guilty of how they have treated their veterans. Mm. We have a homeless yes. issue mm. situation because of the way they have treated the veteran. Mm. So you talk with, with both sides of your mouth. Mm. On one end, you're saying he's not patriotic because he's being disrespectful to the flag. Mm. And if we as a country was respectful to the flag, we would not allow our veterans to be out there homeless, mm -hmm. cannot get the proper mm -hmm. treatment mm -hmm. that they need. Mm -hmm. So again, at the end of the day, his not doing this is causing mm -hmm. a, a much bigger, there's a much bigger mm -hmm. conversation that needs to take place. We hope that it's not just a Black Lives Matter issues, but we'll also look at how we are treating our veterans. We will also look at people who are in a position of influence, that they will not just sit on their monies and have their uh, opportunity, but they'll yeah. be able to give to others as well and be able to be part of this. This should have been happening long ago mm -hmm. with our entertaining community. So I say big ups to him. So Dr. Kennedy, one, one of the things I, I want to say to you, uh, there was a um, silent march today in Southeast Fresno with the Freddie Pintero family and we didn't get a chance to speak about their uh, mother who was uh, killed and murdered by the police. And so. I want to acknowledge what they did today uh, as a family, as a community, and we will hopefully have them on the show here next week, hopefully. Um, I, I will say this about this flag conversation y'all are talking about. Uh, this flag conversation, the flag is what, red, blue, and? Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Okay, so, you know, back in 1921, when Black Wall Street was striving very hard, we were a self-contained self community here in America. That flag that our brother is not, uh, is sitting down, I'm glad he's sitting down. Why? Because that was the same flag that was being flew over Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921 that bombed our entire city mm -hmm. and killed over 1,200 people or 2,000 people and burnt 36 blocks of a thriving community. So no one wants to talk about the flag then, but you want to talk about it now. Okay. It was the same government that dropped nitrogen bombs on top of our community, wow. a thriving community mm -hmm. in 1921. Mm -hmm. We talking about a community that had our own grocery stores, right, our own right. movie theaters, mm -hmm. our own Thanks. railroad lines, taxi cabs, doctor offices, Everything you see in this Mississippi town in Fresno, we had it in 1921. And that was more. the same flag that was flying in, is the same flag that's flying now. So I'm glad that he's sitting down. Matter of fact, I don't even salute it myself now. <laughs> I don't even salute it now. And that's my right not to salute it. Because that flag represent supposed to represent when you when, when you hear this national 
freedom and justice for all. And that's that, a lot. And that was written by a racist man, by the way, just for the record. Written by a racist happened. man. Yeah. So that's not surprising to me. And so here it is today. Our whole community and our ancestors were destroyed by the same flag, by the same government, here in this country, and all of a sudden now, we're supposed to be good little paper boys and sit up here and because America is so used to black people entertaining them since way back yonder. So when somebody has, has the corona to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not saluting right now. And the NFL, and see, and, I, and I'm hoping that this situation, Dr. Kennedy, I hope this situation, because you know, they, they did it during a football piece with Trayvon and Martin and, you know, uh, 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 you know, I can't breathe and all that. But all the black people right now in NFL need to wake up and understand that you're just a high-priced slave that's entertaining white folk. Take it over, X. I mean, no. not to mention the, the they were, you know, I mean, the rem, what is it, the reminiscent comparison of the, the draft with the slave yes. uh, auctioning yes. and all of that. Oh, he, I mean, if you, if you turn the picture down and you just listen to the broadcasters, oh, oh he God. has a, look at his form. He's six foot three. Mm. He's 280 pounds. Look at him run. I mean, it is just. Why? X, it's, 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 all this is connected into slavery. And I don't care who you want to say it's not, it's connected into slavery. That's why when you have training camps, it's really an auction camp, just like they auction our people off in slavery. When you have training camps for NFL, we have training camps for the NBA, we have training camps for the, for the baseball league, they're just sizing you up, seeing how fast you can run, can you catch, can you do that. When they auction black people off here in slavery, they put them up on a pedestal, they sat up there, open your mouth, let me measure your arm, oh, you, 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 you some good stock right here. I can use you, so I'm going to buy you so I can put you on my plantation. This whole country is nothing but a plantation. Just because all of a sudden now, we people can, can get uh, all kind of money now and, and, and and contracts and all of this, but but yet you just be, better be a good house Negro and do what we tell you well, and shut up. Don't fix it. They continue to do what brings in the profits. Nothing hasn't changed. Different day and just a different melody. You know, this thing is going to have to go internationally. When they heard of the people in other countries standing up for Black Lives Matters, that made us feel a little uncomfortable. We were like, oh, how comes the international people are getting involved? But you know, that's how South Africa was changed from its apartheid. When other countries got involved and said, we're going to boycott, you cannot, we're not going to do anything to support South Africa till you get your government together. I believe that the world needs to look at the super nation and say, wait a bit. You, we saw how you treated your black president. We've seen how you've continued to disrespect your people, even your, your athletes now and your entertainers. They don't get the kind of recognition they should get or get the trophies that they need to have and so on and so forth. And I think that the voice of our international arena must speak up so that we can begin to look at some of these human rights violations that are even happening to those of us who are people of color. Look what happened to the LA Clippers or that owner down there, what he said about and someone yes. caught it. Yes. See, Consistent. when you look at him, you think, oh, you know, he has a owner, owner of a team, an arena, and he has a black basketball player. But see, there's an undercurrent with these folks. There's an undercurrent. And We're nothing but high-priced slaves to these people, and our black people don't understand. See, it's a money game. Because, see, when you go to college, that's, see, that's where it starts, doing, doing mm. elementary. And then you go to high school, and in high school you go to college. See, they're already marketing you already to get to the big leagues of the NBA. And then when you get there, you don't have a, you, you're not even treated as a man to say, I have a right to how I feel. Well, I guess it depends on who you are. Because if you're like um, a, a Muhammad Ali, a Jim Brown, in those days, you know, they stood up. It depends on the individual. You, gotta, you, gotta, you cannot be afraid to take a stance. Like now, like LeBron James has his whole mentoring program that he's trying to build Cleveland back up. And he has his friends, and he's mentoring kids from the third grade all the way to college, giving them scholarships, and, and fourth, he's partnered up with people. We can't do it alone. We need each other. It's not just 
it's an everybody problem. We need each other to build each other up to go forth and do great things. We're not going to be able to do it by ourselves. I tell yes. you, this, as an organizational psychologist, mm -hmm. the racism still results <clears throat> the same way. It may look different. It may have a different kind of walk to it. Mm -hmm. It may smell a little differently, but the end result is still the same. We are still dealing with racism, the same racism that was on the plantation. It is the same racism today. It may look different and taught different. We may call it something else, but at the end of the day, the result is still the same. The oppressive result is still the same. And this is what this young man is trying to draw attention to. So I, I, just, I just feel that, you know, some, some point in time, black people in America are going to have to figure out because I go back to that shirt Dr. Kennedy read, do for self or die, or, a slave. or die a slave. And I feel right now, how come we don't have our own NBA basketball league? How come we don't have our own we baseball? We get it now. We used to have our own we baseball. We used to have our own <laughs> baseball league, right? We were entertaining ourselves, we right? We get it now. But then all of a sudden, when you put a money uh, uh, cap on it and, and you're and you forking out this money, Oh, well, why don't you come over here and play well? I mean, how come we don't have our own black historical college here in California? All of them are in the South. This is what I'm talking about, building an institution to sustain our children. Listen, Brother Man says he's going to donate a million. I would like to suggest that he takes that million and put it aside so we can get our own MBAs. We can begin to build our own infrastructure. If every black athlete took a million and put it aside and use that as a foundation to start building our own empires, we wouldn't have to put up with the sort of insult that we get at all. And so that's a challenge to those who are making that money. Put that money aside and reinvest it into our communities. Let us have our own teams. Let us have our own areas instead of having to subject ourselves to who we can say and what we can say and when we can say it and how we can say it. And a person who tells you that your feelings does not matter, that you shouldn't have to speak out your feelings, that is nothing but a person who's an oppressor, who's trying to down your feelings. Because it's just, it's just true, Dr. Kennedy, that you know, as, 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 as a black man, we, we are an endangered species in this country. I don't care if you have much. Look, look at the football player. He's coming up on all this scrutiny just because he thought he had a constitution that said that he has freedom of speech. He thought he had a constitution, right? But when you listen to the Ray Appleton show and all these different other conservative talk show hosts, they're saying, oh, you're stupid, you're dumb, uh, you, you know, go sit in a locker room and, and do this, this, and that. What, so then the Constitution doesn't even really mean anything when it comes to us as a black people. It doesn't. Do they write it for us? No, the Constitution was not written for us. <laughs> okay. None of the laws okay, in America, now. since you get on that conversation, <laughs> none of the laws in America was written for black people. Wait. It was written for white people we have to and their vote? benefit. Do we still have to vote every, every 25 years? Every 25 years, it has to still? go to Congress, oh. and they have to sign off okay. for us okay. to, 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 to vote every 25 <laughs> years. So don't sit up here and insult us as black people and think that you have some high-priced slaves that, that can run a, put a little ball in a hoop and I'm not, I'm not degrading them. I'm just giving you the content of how America look at them. Have they always looked at us since we were brought over here on slave ships? Nothing has changed. It's just the same old song, just a different, mel a different well, melody. America does not want to recognize her slavery history. So even if we played into her game and says, okay, you don't want to recognize it, let's just talk about the 21st century. Let's talk about what's going on now. All of these police shootings that are going on the lack of housing, the lack of jobs. And this has been going on long before they got a black president. He came in and had to adopt this stuff and work with what really he could. And so if we just want to look at just what's going on today, we got some issues. And so it has to have started somewhere. So for those who don't want to take their minds back, because you know, you got some black folks who don't even want to even talk about their history, then just talk about where you're at today. Look what is going on with your entertainers today who are making big money. Look how they subject them. Look at the way they are being uh, treated and disregarded and disrespected. So start somewhere. But for goodness sake, own it and name it for what it is. We are in an intersection in the United States of America. We're in an intersection. And we need intervention. Because I tell you what, you got two potential candidates that's going to be the president. And I don't know which is better than the other. 
But I tell you what, America is going to wake up and smell the coffee because we're all in this Titanic ship together. Something has to change. And we for black folks better know who we are and what where, where we're coming from. I'm so glad I went to the South. But to me, I'm in school right now. <clears throat> this is my education because it's really shown me how you survive in a system that has been a Jim Crow system and see how that Jim Crow system looks even different today. Still a Jim Crow system. And so those of us who think we're sitting on the West Coast and all is well, uh, we better make sure we know what time of the day it is. Well, Dr. K, we need to really, really put it in content here because I, I don't want, you know, some, because <laughs> you have some, some of our white brothers that say, you know, I, I wasn't there. I, I mean, I didn't do that. I mean, that legacy. How, 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 why, why are you blaming me? We're not blaming anyone in this society right now for <clears throat> what happened in 1921. But I will say somewhere down the line, somewhere maybe sort of, that you may have been a beneficiary of what happened in 1921 when Tulsa, Oklahoma was destroyed. Because Tulsa, Oklahoma was supposed to be passed down to me, to you, and to our grandchildren so that they could be able to survive and be productive people in this country. So right now, when we look at the U.S. Constitution for what it is, was there any black folk at the table when 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 that was being uh, written? What, 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 did we have input in the Constitution when it was written? Uh, uh, did we have any dialogue in the Constitution when it was written? I mean, we talk about three fifths of a human being, right? I mean, 